With us today, we have Omar Takawal as the Vice President General Manager of Cisco's Contact Center Business Unit. He is responsible for the development and execution of the Cisco Contact Center strategy and portfolio. Prior to his role, Omar was the co-founder and CEO of Voicea, a voice-based AI assistant company, which he led into till the acquisition by Cisco in August of 2019. We also are joined by Anthony Passamard, who leads conversational AI product team here at Google Cloud. He is responsible for the overall execution and automating the com communication and create exceptional personalized and customer experiences. He has proven leadership in transformative technologies and has spent 20 years in various cloud, cloud companies such as Salesforce, AWS, and now Google Cloud. There's actually a lot of research showing the impact of AI in contact center, but the way, the way we're seeing it is that until now, contact center always had to balance their operational costs with their customer satisfaction. And that's been always the challenge. You increase your cost, you can get better CSAT. If you decrease your cost, you get lower CSAT. It was almost uh, directly linked. And that's what AI really is transforming today. You can actually achieve both, get a better CSAT and lower your operating costs. And that's the revolution of AI in contact center. And that's fairly recent that you're able to achieve that. If you think a little bit about you know, where AI impacts contact center, it's really about the first thing is helping human agent do their better, their, do their job better, be super agent, you know, access to information in real time, et cetera. And we'll talk about that. But it's really about making them the center of the contact center and making them very good at their job so they can provide stellar customer experience. The other area is to help the customers when they need it at any time, 24 seven service, get their answers right there uh, without having to talk to a human agent sometimes and really get things done quickly, efficiently and in a personalized way. And the last area where AI has strong impact contact center is uh, understanding the data, understanding what happens in your contact center. What kind of information do you have access to? What are your customers asking of you? What are your agents doing well or not as well? And how do you how do you find that all of that AI helps you do that and really optimize your contact center operation very well? So if you think about the partnership with Cisco here and, and Quantify, it's really around a lot of the technology that Google de has developed over the years, particularly with uh, technology around Google Assistant and the Google Home, and uh, how Google has invested you know, millions and millions of dollars and hundreds of people trying to understand better what people say the content of the conversation and be able to react to that. So from the first hello in your call to you know, the analytics at the end of the conversation, AI is there all the way, listening into the conversation, helping customers and agents do their job better. So really, um, AI has that impact, it's transformative. The advent of voice technology is, is fairly recent, two, three years, I would say where it's at a level where you can really, really feel impact. And you see IDC here with 1.5x better uh, net promoter score in 2025. I think they're actually sandbagging a little bit here, to be honest. I think it's gonna happen sooner than that. That's my, my that's my personal take. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, I, let's take this back to people so that so we can understand what's, what's the AI really trying to achieve. I mean, each of us have been consumers who have been on the call with a contact center or chatting uh, with a contact center. And what is it we want? It's real basic. I want to wait less, right? Yeah, you're on that call and you're hearing music, you're chatting and, and you, you see the bubbles on the screen. You want to wait less. Second thing is identify me faster and don't be so rigid in identifying me, right? It, like we want to get past that really quick so we get down to the problem. And don't make me repeat myself. Uh, you want to hear people frustrated, ask them to repeat themselves the fifth time. Uh, and then at the end of all of that, really you just want to get your problem solved. So that's where the AI is going to come in, in terms of you know reducing the wait times, getting you identified, not making you repeat yourself so the context is preserved, and then helping uh, solve the problem. From the perspective of the agent, it's a, it's a really different profile. You know, um, we were talking to some of our partners who had done these extensive interviews of agents, and they were surprised at a certain learning they had. They were surprised that a lot of the agents came back and they weren't getting burnt out because of the customer conversations. They were getting burned out because of the difficulty of the system interactions. I mean, they took the job 
of customer success because they want to speak with customers at the end of the day. And so if you can do the, the tools that basically the software that learns and do, does some of these interactions for them, at least the easy ones, the repeatable ones, the agent experience is happier. And we all know happy agents make happy customers. So the AI can impact both sides of this equation. We're all very familiar with the idea of flattening the curve because of the pandemic. And just to refresh everybody's memory there, the whole issue here and why so many people are at home and social distancing and wearing masks is that at a certain infection rate, we overwhelm the hospital beds. And if that happens, any particular local society is in big, big danger. And so, um, and so we've put in all these incredibly impactful, painful uh, solutions to protect us from the pandemic. Well, the contact center pretty much has the exact same problem. Uh, and it's also exacerbated by the pandemic because now all of a sudden you're you're not able to go into retail outlets as much, and you're 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 on the phone or you're chatting, um, and the volumes are are somewhat overwhelming, and so this is accelerating people's adoption of AI because the AI specifically can help with this situation. If you deploy uh, a chat bot and a voice bot instead of all those calls piling up and more and more people, you know, experiencing what Gorov was saying, you know, your call's important to us, but you know, hear this great music um, and, and they're getting really frustrated and, and, and so on. What's, and it's piling up above the capacity of the human agents to process the calls in a reasonable amount of time. AI chatbots come in there and some of them, you know, if you look at like the 80, 20 rule, you're going to find that, some easy problems are very repeatable, like you know, resetting a password or asking for a location or did my, my shipment, uh, did, did my package ship. Some of these are like repeatable and easy to handle and a voice bot can process it and they can get the answer to the customer and they can get them off. And what that'll do is cut off a huge percentage of the volume and the customer will be dealt with immediately. They won't be sitting through these wait times and you bring that volume down. So all of a sudden it is below the capacity of the human agents. Now they're on the phone, they're taking calls and people aren't waiting. Uh, and so it is a super impactful type of technology, kind of to what Anthony was saying, you know, it gets us out of this trap of, you know, spend a lot to make people happy, be efficient. And all, all of a sudden people are unhappy here. You're, you're, you're able to get over that because the AI is handling the stuff that can be handling. People are out of wait times. People are happy. The contact center didn't spend too much. So it's, it's very effective. Anthony, can you talk about some of the things that Google cloud has done and focused our efforts when it comes to this pandemic? When this happened earlier this year, uh, everybody at Google was very, what we call Googly. They all wanted to help all of a sudden. <laughs> and uh, so we all came together and it was it was a massive collaborative effort, but first internally at Google with different organizations. So our team partnered with Verily, for example, which is a, a healthcare entity of, of the Alphabet Group, also worked with our healthcare vertical team focused on healthcare first. Um, so the idea was really to, to get something out to market, to answer questions from, from people think, you know, am I sick? Like, how do I, how do I know? How do I self-diagnose myself? So in healthcare it was pretty obvious. Uh, for citizens, no, if they lose their, their job, how do they get their unemployment benefit? Are they gonna be covered somehow? Uh, in financial services, people couldn't pay their mortgage. Like, how do I, how do, I do that? Do I, can, I, can I push that out? Like, is, is there an option for me there? Or, uh, you know, in, uh, in, uh, in health insurance, you know, if they go do a test or if they're sick, they spend days in the hospital, are they gonna be covered? All those questions just piled on all of a sudden. And uh, we had to be able to deliver self-service experience very fast. And let's, let's be realistic. If you deploy a full contact center experience, you're probably gonna take a few months. We didn't have that luxury. We couldn't wait that long. So we had to come up with something new and we did that. We collaborated very strongly with internally to get a product out that was able to deploy bot in two weeks, but you can't do it alone. In two weeks you could deploy bot, but you need a, you need a partner and Cisco was there, reacted very, very quickly to be able to deploy those bots on, a, on a, an infrastructure, telephone infrastructure and contact center infrastructure, but also having a, an SI partner like Quantify to help creating those bots for those companies. So we've done that, uh, it's, been, it's been really successful. Uh, hopefully helping a lot of people. I think we'll talk about some of the use cases here, but it's, uh, it, it's been a fantastic collaborative effort internally and externally with our partners to deliver this in, in record time. 
And uh, we're really happy about the results. The state of Illinois was uh, actually uh, one of the first to launch, and the, actually the governor of Illinois went, went on, on, on stage to talk about this in his collaboration uh, with Google. So that, 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 was, that was really great. What happened there is in the first two months, uh, they received more queries than the entire year, the entire prior year for their unemployment benefit. Uh, it's uh, it, it was a catastrophe, literally for the constituent of the state, but also for the contact center of of the state that just couldn't handle this. So they got completely overloaded uh, with um, with requests. The partnership with Cisco and Quantify and Google were able to deploy a quick um, a bot there, a set of bots that handle all those requests, uh, you know, track status, etc. of the unemployment um, re requests. And really get uh, very very good results out of this. Uh, you know, all the all the requests are now handled in a proper manner. Uh, I think they're answering about forty thousand calls a day right now on uh, both chat and voice channels. So it's both channels, which is uh, really really impressive. And if you think about a success story here, th this was really a way to have strong strong impact on people who had lost their job and needed help and could not wait. And uh, there was no way without AI that this could have happened. To be honest. And uh, that's, uh, for us, you know, the fast implementation, the really good quality of the bot, the great implementation and the infrastructure to support that all came together to help people in this uh, really tough time, especially at the beginning of the pandemic, but it's still continuing right now. If you think about, uh, if you've worked in enterprise, you know that uh, um, public sector is one of those sectors where it takes forever to deploy anything. This was the one of the fastest deployment I've seen, and, and we've seen many other states now doing it uh, with, with that rapid response uh, VA. So it's 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 fantastic to see that uh, that impact happening. This was a really impactful. I was so so proud to be able to work with uh, the 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 team here with Google and and Quantify. And one of the things that we've seen uh, since the pandemic happened is we had to create rapid response offers across a whole bunch of our product sets. And um, we ended up seeing, you know, situations with uh, governments and states having to set, you know, nurses uh, on, on health lines. We've seen situations where people had to over weekend set up a new contact center. Um, then we started moving on to like economic uh, con contact centers around jobs and claims. And then after that, um, it started moving on to contact tracing. There's a whole bunch of that. So as we watch this pandemic progress, lots of new volumes, as, as Anthony mentioned, you know, people are seeing situations where one or two months uh, saw the whole volume of a year, uh, right? And so that just got all of us it, it, it really uh, to move fast, to give support and really make a difference. It's, you're, you're stuck at home, but you're, you're impacting people's lives in a pretty big way. Google is very, very strong at AI. We know natural language processing. We know speech to text. We know text to speech. Uh, we, we have very, very strong technology there. And we wanted to partner with the leaders in contact center. And Cisco is a leader in contact center. And you can't, you can't do one without the other. You need both <laughs> to deliver the solution. And so having that strong partnership with the leader was a way to you know, leverage first an install base that Cisco has. And you know, if you have a Cisco contact center solution today, you can benefit from Google's AI very, very quickly, but also leverage the knowledge and the expertise that Cisco had in the space to make sure that we're delivering the right solution, the right features uh, that is needed in contact center. So we're, that, that partnership is, is very natural. Uh, and we're really trying to meet the customers where they are. If, if they have those Cisco, or if they want to look at a leader, a leading contact center solution, they look at Cisco, then we want to be there with them and deliver what we do best, which is AI. It's been a lot of fun to work in this partnership and it's very impactful uh, because when we kind of look at our footprint, we have the largest footprint of agents on contact center systems of any player uh, in the world in the United States. And we're number two and in some cases tied for number one in the international market. So we have a great footprint and the beauty of what we're doing with Google, it meant that we could activate that footprint very quickly for this partnership. So that if I'm some customer or some government sitting on uh, a Cisco system, um, very quickly you could launch a voice bot and a chat bot 
uh, that's integrated. That's why this partnership made so much sense because Google took a very thoughtful approach about saying, what can we do better than anybody else in the world and bring that to market rapidly? They didn't rebuild the entire context center system, they partnered. Um, so it just made this very natural. So at the end of the day, when a customer gets off an interaction, there, there's really just three high level impacts to them. The first and the most important, of course, is did you solve the problem? But the way they think that through is how easy did you make it? Like, are they, you know, going to the next room and complaining about the interaction? They're like, hey, I got it solved. I'm, I'm, ha I'm, I'm happy. Um, and then, and then uh, that ease, of course, impacts their feelings. How do they feel about it? And of course, that gets reflected in stuff like NPS and so on. So at the end of all this technology talk, that's all that matters is solving it, solving it in a way that's easy, making them feel good about it. So the specifics about how we do that are, First off, you know, you're doing the voice bots and chat bots to get them fast answers where it's an easy problem. But what that does is it changes the profile of the kind of problems that get through to the humans, right? Because you've taken off the easy stuff. Now the humans are getting involved where they can really add value. And there the AI plays a different role. It basically is there to make the agent smarter and faster by not interrupting the conversation with the human, but by bubbling up answers saying, hey, try this. Here's a knowledge base article. Here's how we solved it last time. Um, and that's really helpful in contact centers because as you know, in many contact centers, the people, the agents on the call, some of them are new because there's like churn in the industry. And so particularly in their, in their first few weeks and months, the AI is just really handholding them and getting them to answers um, faster. And then when the agent gets off the call, the AI can come in and provide analytics and coaching. And, and so the whole process is impacted. And at the end of the day, what it does solves more problems in an easier fashion, in a way that makes the customer happier. Omar, this is, this is, uh, this is exactly right. And I, I think, uh, you know, even though Google is seen as a technology company and we think about technology all day, uh, the way we're looking at contact center AI is all about business outcome. Everything we're, we're looking at, every product, every feature is all about how do I improve that business outcome for the customers? And keeping that in mind allows us to deliver the, the right products. Uh, ideally, we would deploy that and you wouldn't even know it, it's AI. It, it's, it's just natural conversation in the self-service channel. It, it's very efficient agents. It's great insights on what's happening for your contact center. You, do you care what, what model you're using? Do you care what algorithm is there or this? And it doesn't matter really. Let, let us do the job in the back end. Let us provide the best possible. But what matters is what are we solving for with this solution? And hopefully we're really solving those business problems that you described, Omar. I think that, that's, that's the key. And as long as we're focused on that, customers will benefit on both end, the end customers and our customers. So uh, that, that, that has to be the key message. How do you solve business problems?